Now, I know a lot of you guys want to paint Andre as the devil right now. And to be honest, with everything that's been going on, he really does seem like an evil villain. But we have what appears to be his final response to the allegations. It's seven here. Let's get right into it. There's a couple other YouTubers doing some videos right now about this. So I'm going to put a link in the description for them. And if you guys like this video, please subscribe. Once I reach 100 subscribers, I'm giving a PlayStation Network card out. And I'm going to choose that subscriber at random, but it could possibly be you. It's one in a hundred chance. It's a pretty decent chance of winning a $50 PlayStation Network card. Now, let's get right into it. I had been trying to handle things privately and stay out of the online fray, but I now realize that is impossible. So here's what I have to say from the heart. This has been the most difficult week of my life. There have been moments when I felt like I couldn't breathe from a pressure that wouldn't go away. Having what feels like the entire internet come weighing down on you is a level of hatred I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. Every single action I took, or didn't take, was scrutinized to a level few are familiar with. I never felt more vulnerable, or isolated, or hurt. And it hurts that this stems from people that I truly respect and did consider my friends. Just the month before they departed GX, one of them even stated that I was one of their closest friends. I can only speculate about what changed or if there was even any truth to that statement in the first place, but it's partially why I was caught by surprise. Working remotely can be extremely challenging, as I'm sure a lot of people have learned in the past year. You rarely see your coworkers face to face and transparency isn't inherent like working in the office. One can only be aware of so much beyond what they're being told. And I'm learning now to be much more proactive in reaching out to prevent issues from arising later. First, one to two dollars an hour. I did some quick math and I cannot find a way to understand how this makes sense. Maybe it was said offhandedly, or maybe the individual in question was spending far more time on these assignments than I ever possibly realized. If this was an issue, had I been made aware of it, I would have immediately taken action to reconcile it. Regardless, the general point of the pay being too low for the workload is fair, and we've since addressed this with better pay combined with a clearer expectations and timelines, both for full-time contractors and full-time employees. Sorry, for contractors and full-time employees. Next, work in severe overtime to finish a game before embargo. This shouldn't have happened, period. The reviewers seemed eager to dive in, and I got caught up in their excitement. But I know only too well how draining rushing to meet an embargo can be, as I've subjected it to myself many times. We've addressed this by improving communication with the staff on the current project, tracking how their progress matches up with their planned deadlines, and then making adjustments as needed. Untimely payments? Yep. I often did take an unnecessary amount of time to send out payments, and there really is no excuse. There is a lot of work that goes into managing a channel of this size, with tasks and notifications constantly beckoning for my attention, and I am unfortunately forgetful and easily distracted. But that doesn't excuse anything, and paying my staff should have been a top priority above all else. I have since taken steps to ensure that this doesn't happen again by automating payments through a payroll service. I never set out to become YouTube famous or to employ a staff from my channel. It just grew over time as demand increases. And the policies that we had in place when we were much smaller don't work for a company of this size. I know that now. I had already spent the better part of last year taking the steps to put a better system in place and it's a bummer that the original members aren't around to benefit from it. But this has truly had been a learning experience and I'm going to deploy these lessons as I continue working on myself and my company's policies as we move forward. If you've gotten this far, thank you for reading. I am far from perfect, but I am trying. I love my current team, and we are truly united by our passion for gaming and fueled by our incredible fans. I really appreciate those who have reached out to me over the past week. I will be forever grateful. I'm sorry for those who I have hurt, and I promise that I will do better. Much better. Now, what do I think about this response? 
I think honestly he means really well by it. I don't like the fact that he didn't use names. He should have specifically addressed Steve who basically started all of this. I think this response is way better than his last one. But he does have a long way to go and a lot of the stuff really hits home. Like he just had a channel. He was just trying to make videos and now it grew into a company and obviously he's not a manager he's not a business owner he doesn't know how to handle everything he did have some things that he needs to work on and it looks like he is going to be working on them but time will only tell what's going to happen next i think with all the pressure that he's facing from everyone and his current staff being ready at this point if he's underpaying them or if these things aren't going through they can just make videos about it on YouTube, so it makes a lot of sense. So I do think he's going to change his ways. I don't completely blame him. Of course, he still made some mistakes, especially if they're his friends. Like he said, he really should have been paying more close attention. And like he says himself, be more proactive. But it looks like he realizes these things, and he's going to make a change. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you guys next time.